Peter Dalsgaard is talking about experimental systems and research through design. Thank you. Um, and I really want to thank the previous speakers. This has been an awesome session so far. And thanks to all of you for hanging in there to hear, hear me talk about a semi-obscure German historian of science. You've been warned. Uh, this is a note, so I'll have to uh, kind of uh, go quickly through it. And it also means that I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to start by the conclusion and the takeaways, and then hopefully I'll have time enough to make my way back to the beginning of the talk. In this note, uh, I propose that looking to more well-established academic disciplines may help us articulate and develop research through design as a research approach. And I do this in a particular manner, namely looking at the work of Hans-Jörg Reinberger uh, and four of his core concepts. And just to very briefly situate this work, I expect that many of you in, in this particular crowd know about research through design, but this is a research approach that employs methods and processes from design practice as a legitimate method of inquiry. And this has emerged as a, a fairly prominent research approach within the design-oriented communities within HCI. Now, last year at the Creativity and Cognition Conference, uh, one of the keynote speakers, Stephen Scrivener, uh, introduced me to the work of hans Reinberger. I had never heard of him before. Uh, and I think in part because uh, quite, uh, quite a bit of his work hasn't been translated in, into English yet. Um, but I was intrigued by, uh, by this keynote. I started reading up on it. And what really struck me about his work was that even though he works within the field of molecular biology and approaches it as a historian of science, the way in which he describes the epistemology of experimentation, meaning the ways in which we generate new knowledge and learn through experiments, really resonated with the ways in which we normally describe experimentation in design research. And the particular concept, uh, the main concept that I look at in this note is Reinberger's notion of experimental systems. And he has a quite holistic understanding of what an experimental system is. He says it's the basic unit of experimental activity and that it combines local, technical, instrumental, institutional, social, and epistemic aspects. And really, experimental systems are crucial to the way that we do research because any study begins with the choice of a system. Everything depends on this choice. The range within which the experimenter can move, the character of the questions he's able to ask, and often also the answers he can give. I'm just going to stop for a short while and clarify a few things for you and for Revio too. I am not suggesting that we should model research through design on the natural sciences or that we should adhere to their methodologies. What I am suggesting is that looking at other articulations of knowledge generation, such as that of Reinberger, may help us understand and articulate research through design in its own right. And I think there are good reasons why we might want to do this, because research through design is still a nascent field, and there are a number of central issues, basic research issues, that are still contested or underdeveloped. But back to Reinberger. I'm going to briefly run through these four key concepts and then begin to scratch the surface of what it might mean if we look at research through design through this lens. Firstly, experimental systems. I briefly introduced it before. Uh, these are systems of manipulation designed to give unknown answers to questions that the experimenters themselves are not yet able clearly to ask. They're not simply experimental devices that generate answers. Experimental systems are vehicles for materializing questions. And when I read this, I thought, this doesn't sound like science in the way that I normally think about science. Um, another thing uh, that is quite interesting about this uh, when we start looking at research through design is that Weinberger tells us that these systems are composed of both epistemic things, which are the things that we want to know more about through our experiments, and technical things, which are the setups and, and things that allow us to study epistemic things. If we look at research through design, I think we might say that design projects are probably uh, the most prominent basic experimental system. Um, we often talk about wicked problems and the co-evolution of problem and solution, and this has been brought up in, uh, in this session as well, uh, as a very particular and unique way of, uh, of design research, something uh, that makes it stand out from other modes of inquiry. But what Reinberger says that this might actually be a general characteristic of experimental research in other, in other domains as well. 
Another thing that stands out is that the designs or the prototypes and artifacts that we built are often some, uh, in, in some way conflated with epistemic things. They are the things we want to know more about. Uh, so the generation of knowledge and the generation of designs are often intertwined in, in research through design. Um, this needn't always be a problem, but it can potentially be problematic if the design and the epistemic thing start moving in different directions or the design you built start moving away from the question you really wanted to answer. The second core concept is that of differential reproduction. Now, well-functioning experimental systems must facilitate differential reproduction, and this means the continuous generation of new and non-trivial knowledge beyond what we could anticipate when we started experimenting. For this reason, Weinberger also calls them generators of surprises. Um, and I would argue that there are probably quite few constructs in research through design that enable differential reproduction over longer stretches of time, perhaps because most of our design projects are actually finite in time. Um, but if I were to come up with a few proposals, then maybe research programs could, uh, could be uh, one example of that. For instance, Don and Raby's work on critical design, or Hiroshi Ishii and, uh, and Bergilma's uh, work on tangible bits, or perhaps also really strong exemplars such as the Diner book that continues to unfold and help us generate new insights over the course of time. A third central concept is that of graphemes. Experimental systems strongly rely on and at the same time generate graphemes, meaning representations, inscriptions, documentation, and material traces of knowledge. And the important thing to note here is that these are not just things we note down uh, as a form of documentation about what had happened. These things actually frame the way we think about the questions that uh, we, uh, we might answer, and also frames the, the types of uh, answers that we give. So he says that researchers, researchers think with these inscriptions and within the boundaries of such spaces of representation. This is another part of research through design that might be underdeveloped at, at this point in time, but there is a mounting interest in developing graphemes that address both the processes and the products of research through design, such as annotated portfolios, pictorials, design process documentation, and so on. Another way of thinking about it that I think would resonate with a lot of people in here are the ways in which publication templates and formats frame the way in which we post questions and how we seek to answer them. The fourth and final concept is that of experimental cultures. Now, experimental systems, they evolve over the course of time. Uh, they can become unstable, bifurcate, hybridize, and potentially, if they become more stable, turn into experimental cultures or even research disciplines. Looking at research through design, I think we might describe it as a predominantly experimental culture that may be maturing into a discipline. Some cultures seem to be stabilizing. In the book on constructive design research, for instance, they, name, they mention uh, lab, field, and showroom as examples. But there are ongoing negotiations and formulations of basic questions for research, such as what counts as a knowledge contribution. I think we've even had it in this session, this debate. Which criteria these contributions should be evaluated by, which modes of documentation and representation are accepted. So by that, I've made my way back to the beginning or the end. Um, what I propose in this note, uh, just to reiterate, is that I think it might help us in, in articulating and developing research through design if we look to more well-established paradigms of knowledge, knowledge generation. And I've done that by examining uh, four concepts from Weinberger. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jelle van Eyck. Thank you for the wonderful talk. I was thinking about, does Reinberger say anything about tools? Because from a designer perspective, I think your tools are also things you think with, right? And yes. Instead of the representations that you produce. Yes. Um, I only mentioned this very briefly. He talks about epistemic things and technical things. And technical <laughs> things would probably fall into the category of tools. But what is an epistemic thing and what is a technical thing is not set in stone. Things move between these two. So at one point in time, we might be exploring something that is an epistemic thing, something we don't know enough about, we want to know more about it. But as we get to know more about it, it can become a tool and become an epistemic thing that then allows us to explore something else. <laughs>